Welcome to St. John's Worship in Place. I am Vicar Katie Holman, and on behalf of the staff and the pastors of St. John's, we welcome you to our worship. Please visit our website for information on our drive-in communion January 3rd, between 8 and 10 a.m. As well, our Sunday school will pick back up January 10th. See our website for more information. And now welcome to Worship in Place. The grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the reconciling love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. 
Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus brought him up to Jerusalem to be presented to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord and they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and, to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came to the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him into his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. For this child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign for those who will be opposed so the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This was also a prophet. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after his marriage. Then as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshiped there, fasting and praying night and day. At the moment she came and began praising God and speaking about the child to all who were looking for redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Hi, all our St. John's families and children. Uh, welcome to our worship here on December 27th. I'm Pastor Frank Espergren, one of the pastors at St. John's. Uh, we've been blessed to have our families do so many of the children's messages. It's fun for me to be able to have this one. Uh, I have a question for all of you. If I put this on, this big old thing, and this, what time of year is it? What time of year would I be wearing something like this? Winter, right? Yeah, winter. Now I gotta get this off without taking my headphones off. Winter is a season. And it's a season. It's seasons are the, the what happens during the year because of how the earth uh, is tilted on its axis. And, um, and throughout a whole year, 365 days, there are uh, four different seasons. The coldest one we're in right now is winter, of course. The warmest one is summer, and that changes around the earth depending on how the uh, earth is spinning and tilting. Um, so uh, it's winter season right now, but seasons don't always have to be just about the weather. What if I, what if I have one of these? What season, what season does this, by the way, this is a special Reggie Jackson signed uh, Oakland A's Bat Day special. Ask your dad, probably ask your grandpa who Reggie Jackson is, they'll tell you. But this would be for baseball season. And baseball season uh, doesn't happen all year round. It's focused on the summer, start in the spring and uh, with the playoffs and World Series in the fall. Uh, but there's a season to baseball, a time when, um, when, we, when the baseball players get out there and winter is definitely not baseball season. That has to kind of wait for the spring. Um, it's past Christmas day. Um, you know, we already have celebrated Christmas um, uh, at the church, the day Jesus was born. Some of you may be uh, taking um, your Christmas decorations down already. Um, and some of you may be wondering, hey, I've already opened all my presents. But Christmas isn't just a day. And it's not just an evening, Christmas Eve before Christmas Day. Those are important. But from Christmas Day for 12 days is the Christmas season. And we're on December 27th. So we still have 10 more days to celebrate Christmas, to celebrate Jesus' birth. And so I invite all of you to keep saying thank you for Jesus and to love this time of the year when we think about how important it was that God came down to earth as a human being first as a baby in Jesus that we celebrate through the whole of Christmas season. It's good to see all of you. I hope you're having a Merry Christmas. See you soon. Merry Christmas. No matter what 2020 has brought, here we are together, well apart, to celebrate the birth of Jesus and to wonder in the mystery. Today I'm preaching in a mostly empty sanctuary, but I want us all to imagine this place. Can you see it? The beautiful trees, the organ playing, Cora possibly zipping around with a few of her friends in the Kinderum. I think it's odd that a year ago that this is all where we gathered, but still we gather today, but just not in the same space. Instead, we're at home worshiping as a pandemic goes on around us. There are some things we possibly just cannot see coming. There too is something to be said for our ability to imagine the past, for that is what we have experienced. Now, as we begin to wrap up our 2020 year, I want us to have a moment of fun. Though Christ has promised hope in our current situations, at times, you might think something like this. What if 2020 was a slide with a 90 degree drop at the bottom? 
If 2020 was a car, it might be one held together by duct tape. If 2020 was a pinata, it could possibly be a hornet's nest. 2020 was a hula hoop, most likely a barbed wire roll. And if 2020 was a swing, it would most likely hit a brick wall. I say these as lighthearted ways to look at our year, but also we can acknowledge we have all lived through these tough times. And it has been said, and I hold this as truth, that this year we have not all been in the same boat, but we have been in the same storm. And a year ago, we had dreams and hopes of what 2020 might have looked like. 2020 most likely did not match our hopes and dreams. But still, we look forward, knowing that our loving creator is always with us, and we can rest in the promise of that which is to come. And how can we see what is coming ahead? In our gospel today, Simeon and Anna both did that. They knew the promise from God that was to come, and they kept their eyes fixed on these promises every day. Every day they were in the temple worshiping God, and I can only begin to imagine the trauma and stressors that were going around them daily, but yet they kept their eyes fastened on God. Now can you imagine worshiping God in the temple every day? As beautiful as our sanctuary is, I still don't know if I could dedicate my life to being here no matter what. Simeon and Anna knew God called them to the temple, and so they followed. And maybe God hasn't called us all into daily temple living, for we know the church is not the building, but rather the people. However, God calls us to follow and live our lives in light of the gospel, waiting in anticipation for the day we will see God's promise fulfilled. And how surprising it must have been for Simeon and Anna for the fulfillment of a little child to be born to a young mother. And how, too, is it surprising when God shows up for us in unexpected ways? Young parents bringing their baby to the temple was customary in those days and bringing with them a pair of turtle doves. Unfortunately, a sure sign of their poverty as those who had means would have possibly brought an entire sheep for sacrifice. God literally came down in the lowest form possible and yet did amazing things and gifted us with the greatest gift of love we can know. But what if we were in the temple with Simeon and Anna? Would we have noticed? Would our eyes have been fixed on God's promise going on right in front of us? There is an artist, John Zachary, who created nativity scenes in the lawn of, in Claremont, California for Advent every season. And Zachary would come up with these scenes that were provocative and made people stop and wonder as they passed by about the birth narrative in a new way. In 2014, he put up a bus stop. And in the bus stop was a woman and child to represent the Madonna and child. And on the bus stop walls were advertisements, all of the things that make the commercialism of Christmas. And Zachary not only wanted to stir up emotions of joy with Christmas, but wanted to call out that which is all too real in the world today. With the images, Zachary put up this poem. We don't see. Christmas lights catch our eye, tinsel and glitter, the cookies, the presents, shopping sales and chocolate. We don't see the hungry kids in school every day, the infant nursed in the bus stop and alley, toddlers with no safe playgrounds, families with no homes, no safety, no Christmas. If Jesus was born today to an unwed mother, to a teenage unwed mom, to a teenage unwed oppressed minority mom, would we see? Traveling through our own town on a metro or bus, late at night, would we see? We are the people in the inn, sleeping next door to one of God, from God, born out back down the alley, in the cave that we never noticed, never cared to see, 
We are people of the inn, warm with food enough for feasting, water to drink, meds to take, and presents under the tree. We are the latest, the newest, the brightest. We see what we want, what we desire. And infants and toddlers and children of the poor are unnoticed, even held responsible. But God sees. I hear their cries, says the Lord. This imagery brought up by the bus stop image and the poem calls us to stop and to see God in our midst, but also to look forward to what is yet to happen. And as we rush forward to these next shiny things, to the next event or challenge that awaits us, I wonder, are we willing to sit? Are we willing to be still as Anna and Simeon and see Jesus in our midst? Or are we so wrapped up in the hustle and bustle of life that we need to stop our minds, even for just a moment, to let the Spirit meet us here and continue to meet us in the coming days. It is always surprising just how busy COVID life has continued for some, along with seeing that which is in our midst. Can we see what is to come? Simeon and Anna did not see the present state but we're able to see the coming of an ordinary child as the coming of God. So how, too, do we develop eyes like Simeon and Anna? What does it feel like to be at the beginning of something new and imagine its completion ahead of time? I wonder what our lives will be like after COVID. When the vaccine, or with the vaccine beginning, I wonder how is it we will reacclimate ourselves into the world around us? How will we re-enter into fellowship with our neighbors near and far? Everything is new, and for some, everything is terrifying. But will we be like Simeon and Anna with the uncertainty of that is which to come becomes a little less scary because if we, like them, hold on to the promise of God, which has given us grace abounding and love eternal. I was drawn to the strip, a comic strip of the Peanuts this week. It goes like this. Linus and Lucy are sitting, and Lucy looks at Linus and says, can you get me a glass of water? Linus stops and says, why? You do nothing for me. Lucy promises, okay, on your 75th birthday, I'll bake you a cake. Linus gets up and heads to the kitchen, saying, life is a little more pleasant when you have something to look forward to. Unlike Simeon and Anna, Linus probably shouldn't fully trust in that promise. But we can, and Simeon and Anna did. They've trusted in the promise of that which was to come, and it guided their lives and their hearts and how they acted and responded to God. What is it that we watch and look forward to? What hopes and dreams are you looking ahead to with all certainty? 2020 has shown some ugly truths about inequality, injustices, and hatred that has woven itself through our country. How can we be like Simeon and Anna and live into 2021 promising or trusting in the promise of God? while keeping our minds set on which is to come. Jesus is born, the Prince of Peace, yet at times it feels there is no peace. Wonderful counselor, yet at times people are more divided now than ever. How do we continue to greatly rejoice in the Lord, the God enfleshed among us while also speaking out and not keeping silent? The theology of hope for what is to come in spite of our seeming reality. As the vaccine comes out and we can slowly and cautiously come back to life together again, how is it we will live the promise of the cross in our lives with our neighbors and friends? How will we be the voice for the voiceless? It is through the unexpected that God continues to meet us. 
Are our eyes open so we can see? Or are we too busy to take notice? May we all begin to dare to dream, to see the day we can rejoice and celebrate together again in this very space. Let us also envision the work that God has called us into. And let us keep our eyes on God and where God continues to call us now, in this place and time, so we too can be like Simeon and Anna, resting in the assurance of that which is to come. And when the promise comes, we testify and celebrate just the same as they did. Amen. celebration of the birth of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Night and day, all creation praises you, O God. Strengthen your church across nations, denominations, and traditions. Fill us with wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All creation is holy to you, O God. You cause the earth to bring forth its shoots and gardens to spring up. Protect hibernating animals and frozen lands that wait earnestly for longer days of awakening and growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The nations are upheld by your hand, O God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth, inspiring leaders to serve with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of discernment upon legislators grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, O God. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness. Be with all who long for your healing hands, especially Rex, John, Grace, Marlis, Judy, Ed, Wayne, Judy, Steve, Dan, Diane, Carolyn, Alicio Sr., Rhonda, Naomi, Kyle, Catherine, Daryl, Ludella, Angela, Ray, Gordon, Thaddeus, all our Stephen ministers and those in their care and those who name silently in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Comfort us with your love, O oh God. We thank you for those who have come before us, who witnessed your presence, taught us to pray, and brought us into your light. We pray for all who have lost loved ones, especially George Carey and family, at the death of his wife, B. Lila Hansen and family, at the death of her nephew, Jeffrey Holm, and Lisa and Nicholas Petre, as they mourn the death of their unborn child. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Continue to strengthen us, O God, as we live in this time of fear and anxiety. Be with the victims of COVID-19 and their caregivers. Watch over those who are at risk, those who work in older age, and those in need of income, food, company, or health care. Guide citizens and leaders in making decisions that will keep everyone safe. Watch over us as we head into this new year and all that it brings. Help us to find the good in everything. 
Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your children thank you, O God, for the gift of your Son. Prepare us for service so we may continue his great works in the world. Open our ears so we may hear your call. Help us to see the need around us and guide us in finding methods of productive help. Lead us in sharing your love and the light of Jesus Christ with all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All these prayers we lift up to you, O Lord, spoken and unspoken, trusting in your everlasting mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you and your household. And now we will receive our tithes and our offerings. And please know that if you're new to St. John's, the greatest offering you can make this day is to go to our website, click on the new to St. John's tab and fill that out so that we can get to know you in the new year. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for your creating, liberating, and life-giving word. 
You set the foundations of the world. You lead your people into freedom. You lift up the lowly and fill the hungry with good things. Our hearts sing of your mercy and might. Send us forth in the power of your spirit that our lives may witness to your glory. Through, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord, and live God's love in the world. <laughs>